Hola, hemos llegado a Londres y estamos aquí en Nut Espresso, junto con el tostador que se llama Richard Williams. Y vamos a preguntar a Richard cómo fue su carrera en el mundo del café y qué ha aprendido y qué podemos aprender de él. Um, I'm from New Zealand originally mm -hmm. and I've been in uh, London for, for two years mm -hmm. um, and I'll probably be here for a while longer, I think. Uh -huh. So you love what you're doing? Yes, yes. Um, I wanted an opportunity to roast um, and New Zealand is probably 10 years down the track from where London is at the moment. For learning how to roast for, for a barista, for example, what do you think is the first step he needs to know? Um, I think learning to, learning to taste is probably the hardest part of roasting coffee, um, but I think if you want to learn to, to roast, the best place to be is in a roastery. So, you know, I encourage people to go and hang out in roasteries, talk to the roasters, um, you know, just hang around. People about tasting, what is for you uh, the best way to, to learn or, or to, without spending a lot of money? Um, you can do it anyway. I mean, brewing filter coffee at home um, can work quite well. If you've got different coffees, if you have a grinder um, and like some kind of basic water filtration, um, you can you know you can taste a lot of different coffees and get get a lot from it. Um, but I think talking about tasting with other people really helps the process along as well. Particularly talking with people who know more about it than you or have done more than you. I think the main uh, the the main issue here is to to connect with people that know more than you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, d definitely. The thing in your life that most uh, changed your view about coffee, what was it? Um, coming to Nude, to, to be honest with you. When I, when I made the shift down here, um, I started working with a company that was you know, much younger than the one I was before, weren't so defined in the way they do their business, um, and were open to ideas. And so um, quickly, you know, we threw crazy ideas around, tried lots of different stuff, um, and you know, like, it's really encouraged here as well. So, If somebody has an idea, anybody has an idea about something we should do, we go, okay, well, let's, let's try it and see what, see what happens. We decided we would try selling geisha. It's not something that we've ever done before. Very few roasters in London have ever sold any geisha. And just see what our customers, um, what, what happens. And so the, you know, the owners were like, okay, well, let's, let's invest in that and we'll do a lot of publicity around it. And it just sold like wildfire. You know? It sold way faster than we ever expected. And it, we completely sold out of it very, very, very quickly. And why is that? Because really the, the, the people the customers notice the difference in, in taste and in flavors? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we did a lot of open tastings with it. So we encourage people to come in and say, look, you know, this is why it's different. We told the story yep. behind it. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that made it work was the fact that we try and empower our customers and say, you know, this is all the information we have on it. You know, we want you to have it as well. There's no secrets. You know, you can come in here any day and talk to me about anything. And the door's always open. What is your opinion about uh, different types of roast? Um, I think my, my theory on it is that um, people have roasted dark for a long time. Um, and the reason for that is that coffee has been of very poor quality for a very, very long time. Um, now we have green bean, you know, growers, farmers, you know, processing things very carefully, only picking the ripest cherries, so we get much better flavor from the coffee. So when we roast it lighter, we get those flavors coming through, and they're pleasant. Whereas if you take, say, some of the lower grades of coffee and roast them light, they're just awful. They're really, really terrible. So by roasting them dark, we impart roast flavors on them, um, and so they have a flavor that we're familiar with, basically. Um, That's a typical familiar coffee flavor, no? The roast flavor. The yes, yes, it's, it's roast flavor, and you get it in dark beers, Um, you know, people often say dark beer tastes like coffee. Well, no, it tastes like roasting because they roast the malt. Right. Um, and you know, dark coffee tastes like roast flavor, not like coffee. Uh -huh. Coffee's acidic. It's fruity. Um, it's very delicate. Can be very tea-like. Um, you know, can have all sorts of crazy flavors in it. Yeah. For example, um, if you give one a tip to to you know, to people that are buying coffee now uh, for their businesses, uh, what would you uh, suggest uh, to to recognize better coffees? Um, I think the biggest thing with, with better quality coffees is that they're clean, um, the flavors are very well defined, um, and they should be very, very easy to drink. You know, there should be no bitterness to them. They should be quite quite sweet, in fact. Um, you, I mean, coffee does have a, a bit of flavor. Caffeine and, um, and a few other compounds create bitterness, but there should be a, an obvious sort of sugary flavor in there as well. Um, and like, you know, no sort of dusty or off flavors, no earthy flavors. It should be, you know, fruity and, and yeah, clean, I suppose. So really taste the coffee and uh, try to recognize more sweet flavors, more uh, citrus flavors, more fruity flavors. Tenía la impresión de que era un café con una acidez bastante elevada 
eh, un cuerpo medio, entonces lo que he procurado es a la hora de introducir eh, para que la curva fuera más larga eh, y con la inercia de calor que tenía ya eh, llegaba al final que con un par de impulsos de calor eh, pues he conseguido que el glicerano estuviera desarrollado. Entonces con eso lo que intentaba era pues, que estuviera también dulce. Hostia. Muy buena. Buen barista, buen café.